Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I had a number of times where I thought about staying up during the amendments, but I, uh, I think a lot of folks uh, were, were uh, making my points and I decided not to go too deep. I, I will, uh, for folks that have been, uh, we've all talked about our seniority or lack thereof and things like that. This is my 17th year in the building here. I know I'm probably in the top 12 or 15 of us in that way. Um, and I've uh, been here also through three speakers, like um, uh, someone else, I think Rep. Newberry had said. Um, and I've seen the process and the challenges of the process and things like that. And, and I think that's where I actually really would concur with Rep. Newberry as well. You, you can make an argument that things like, for instance, the rule suspension really isn't necessary because of um, uh, X, Y, or Z, but he's right. And in the end, what happens in the process is the problem. And actually, it's a process before that as well. When everybody, if, if we're going to really be so anxious about leaving here in August, I think we ought to look at instead taking more actions in February and March and April and May, and that's been brought up a couple of times. But I'd point to the fact that the Senate does that. I know Rep. Tabon was talking about negotiation. That still can happen. That doesn't really change anything. We still likely will do the budget relatively late in the session, and that's honestly the biggest negotiation device for both sides uh, in the end anyway. Um, so so I, I, again, as I saw it, over and over and over and over, 16 times over again, bills rarely were getting acted on on the House side, at least until the end of the session. And that goes, like I said, back to the uh, beginning of time from what I've been able to tell. So I just want to remind people of that. So these kinds of rule changes that we talked about in many ways aren't really about putting brakes on the system, but rather instead trying to force the system to be better, to be better for us, to be better, more responsive, more democratic, more, rep more allowing us to be representative, uh, um, a representative democracy. Um, so I just wanted to, to make that point, but uh, a couple other things that haven't really been brought up, I, I just wanted to also point to folks on, um, they, uh, uh, like Rep Carson maybe said, not make or break things, but they're, they're things that I think are important. I, I really do want to thank the, the committee for taking the 24-hour uh, sub-A rule there. That's something I have, as a member, as a member of committees, seen how important that is to us. It's not just for the public, that's for us as committee members to be able to see something before we're gonna to have to take action on it. And actually, I'd urge us in the future to seriously look at removing the exception for the Finance Committee. In the end, that I really do think sincerely, um, the, the committee that honestly puts in the most hours of any, it, it's a bit harsh to think that they're the only ones that don't get this sort of credit and they have the opportunity to look at those. So I'd, I'd urge us to do that. Um, the other thing I thought I would touch on, I, and I agree with, with the speaker in that we do need to move bills out of judiciary and out of finance into some of the other committees. I, I don't know that we need a new committee for that though because that's going to pull more members out of other committees is going to make things more complicated in terms of scheduling committees, and it's going to pull staff toward that. Those, those staff and those committee members would be much better suited, I think, on the committees we have now, and instead looking to push bills toward the other committees that are out there, whether that's labor, uh, environment, um, uh, and, and the various other committees out there. You know, Veterans Affairs, certainly, I, my understanding is get very few bills. So I'd, I'd urge um, us to instead look to use the existing process make it better. We can always make it better. Just because it's worked before doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And I, I really, really, really sincerely want to push people on that um, because I do think that's a, a major challenge. And, and I, one last thing, I, I would also concur. I, I, while I, I, I do want to recognize that we're making an effort to make an, um, have an impact on sexual harassment issues, I, I really sincerely feel that the House rules feels like the wrong place for it. And we didn't have the kind of deliberation we had on this as we might have. Most of the rules are again are the same as Rep. Uh, Chairman Corvese said, but this is something that was new and I think it would make more sense to give it a more deliberate approach. Thank you very much, Mr. Gray. I appreciate the time.